The topic of lesson 8 is to analyze the deformation of a beam based on loads based on loads which are not external. Uh, for instance, let's see how a beam deflects based on its own load its own weight. So basically if you have a beam like this hanging downwards from the ceiling should go straight and the only thing that is the only load which is applied to this beam is is its own weight from the center of mass let's say w we want to see how this beam deforms uh, by the by its own load by, by its own weight applied um, to the beam and ANSYS. So this is the first case we're going to examine in this uh, lesson. In lesson, in the second case of this lesson, I'm going to have the same beam and I'm going to let the weight be applied to it. So the weight is there. Plus I'm going to apply some temperature difference to the beam. So I will have two cases uh, to study in this example. So when it comes to uh, uh, applying weight or uh, analyzing the deformation of a beam based on its own weight and temperature differences, what we have to do in ANSYS is to define um, two other material properties except for, I mean, uh, except for elasticity and uh, Poisson's ratio. Again, I'm going to use uh, steel as the material for this uh, analysis for which we know that uh, elasticity is 200 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio is almost 0.3 but then because I'm going with weight and what, what I define will be a volume in order to get the mass to generate to uh, analyze its uh, the effect of its weight I'm gonna apply uh, density for steel it's almost 7800 um, kilograms per cubic meters the density of steel and because I'm gonna also examine the effects of temperature on this beam I'm gonna need to uh, provide the, my uh, provide ANSYS with coefficient of thermal expansion alpha which is for a steel I've read to be 13 times 10 to the minus 6 so in this analysis when I'm defining the material uh, for my model, I'm going to apply, I'm going to give four values for my material. Elasticity, Poisson's ratio, density, and coefficient of thermal expansion. And since I'm uh, interested in the effect of weight, what I should be careful is the volume of the beam that I'm defining in my model. So I'm going to use beam 3 again. Um, as the element I'm going to pick for my analysis and if you remember from previ previous examples uh, for beam 3 I have to give a real constant for which um, it asks me for cross-section area and um, uh, area moment of inertia and also some height so the cross-section area of my beam is going to be what I have done before 12 by 12 which gives me the cross-section area is going to be 144 IZZ is going to be 12, 12 to the 3 and height is going to be 12 still and I'm going to give a height of uh, 300 millimeters let's say to this um, beam to the steel beam so these are all going to be in uh, millimeters you know that um, IZZ has a, a unit of uh, length to the 4 and so height is going to be in millimeter the temperature that I'm going to apply the temperature difference I'm going to apply for this element for this model is going to be let's say 30 it's going to be 30 and um, I'm going to assume the gravity is going to be 9.8 meters per square second. This is going to be x direction 
and this is going to be my y direction. So I guess everything is um, explained. So let's switch to ANSYS and do the analysis. All right. We are in ANSYS and let's run the analysis. The first step I'm going to do is to come to preferences and make sure that I'm uh, picking structural. Click OK. Come to preprocessor and again, like always, define the element that I'm going to use. Go to beam and I'm going to pick beam 3. Stick to the default options, click OK, and close the window, and come to real constants to define the cross-section area and uh, the other requirements of this uh, analysis, like always. OK, close the window, and I go to material properties, load material models, so one thing that differs in here compared to the previous six lessons is after I pick or define uh, elasticity of two, uh, 200 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio of 0.3 and OK the window, then I have to define a density. So I double click on density, give the density of 7800 7, um, for the material and I come to thermal expansion, instantaneous coefficient, isotropic, and pick again um, uh, 13 times 10 to the minus 6. And OK this window. So for material model number 1, I have defined density uh, and uh, the mechanical properties in terms of uh, Poisson's ratio and uh, elasticity, and also instantaneous thermal expansion coefficient. So while I was defining all of them, they were uh, recorded for my material model number one, so it doesn't mean that I have three different materials defined on my analysis. Perhaps if I were supposed to have more than one material for this analysis, I would come to material, new model, and it would uh, add a new model here for me and I could again provide it with different properties. But since in this example I'm only doing one uh, material, so I'm going to stick with one model and close this window. Come to modeling. Uh, in contrast to what I did in lesson six, in this lesson I'm going to uh, generate my model by defining key points and provide the coordinates of zero and zero, apply, and the next key point is going to be at an uh, a y of 300. OK, so I have the beginning and the end of my beam. And then go to Line, Create Lines, Straight Line, and pick the two key points and OK the window. And because I came, I did my model or defined my model using key points and lines, I need to do meshing in here. The reason I did this is that I want to divide my model or my beam into um, 50 segments so that I will have 50 or 50, 51 nodes and for each node I can read the displacement in Y direction. If you remember in lesson 6 I divided my node, my element or my model into four sections or three sections by, by defining four nodes. I could do that here too if I were gonna, if I wanted but since I want to divide my, my beam into 50 sections, it's more convenient to do a model like this, define the key points and generate a line between them and come to mesh, come to size control and manual size, lines and pick lines, I can say pick all because I only have one line so I can either click that and I'll come to here number of element divisions I'm going to pick or I'm going to put 50. So my line is divided into 50 different uh, segments or smaller segments. Then the next step is to come to mesh, lines, pick the line and click OK. Now my beam is divided into 50 smaller elements. My model is ready so I come to load and again I want to make sure that I'm doing a static analysis come to define loads and the first thing I want to do is to make sure that on this end the beam is fixed. So I come to apply structural displacement on key points and click OK. All DOF 
all degrees of freedom are equal to zero. So I click OK this one. The constraint is applied, but I'm not applying an external load. Instead, I'm going to see the deformation of the beam uh, according to its own weight. So I come to inertia, gravity, and global. And I want to see, if you see in this window, you can provide or you can input uh, different values of gravity in x, y, and z directions, but I want to pick only in uh, y direction, and the gravity is going to be 9.8. I OK this window, and the other thing I want to mention in here is that despite my y direction is on the is uh, upwards, but you don't give minus 9.8 for gravity in y direction just to make sure that you're uh, that everything is going downwards or the gravity is downwards. Perhaps when you uh, give a, a value of 9.8, a positive value of 9.8, everything is going to work the way we expect and the material is going to deform downwards. So I click OK on this one and um, so my model is ready. Go to solution, solve current LS, OK the window, the material is or the analysis is done. So I go to general post process and the first thing I want to see is a uh, nodal solution and a displacement in y direction. So as you see the displacement is in negative direction or negative uh, orientation in y direction which means despite I entered a gravity of positive 9.8 my material is expanding in the negative direction according to y, uh, y coordinate. I can also read uh, display, I mean stress in y direction. Click OK. A constant stress of 0 0.017, uh, probably megapascals or or uh, newton per millimeter squared, is uh, uh, defined or calculated for this model. But let's see the uh, reaction solution. All items, and the only node or the only end of this beam that has reaction is this top beam where we fixed it. And there is only one uh, reaction, the Fy. So basically, the weight of the material is in y direction. And so the only reaction that we have in this end is Fy of 0.33 times 10 to the 10 newtons. We can also see nodal, dis nodal solutions, let's say um, Y component of deformation. So you can see the deformation for all of the 50 nodes that are, or 51 nodes that are in this model. Node 1, node 2 is 0, basically because node 1 is this end and node 2 is the other end. And the rest of the nodes have uh, their associated values of displacement in y direction. And uh, we can also read uh, um, stress in y direction for each node. In here. Which is only for, I guess, node uh, two, because we are, we are only given one value or for one node. Um, so basically, that's uh, what we read. Now let's go back and apply a second load um, to this model, and that is temperature. So I come to define loads, temperature on elements. And I want to def divide or define this temperature to all the elements. I pick all, and for all of them, I just pick or enter 30, 30, and 30. And I OK this window. Or OK, uh, this one was wrong, so let's uh, delete this temperature from uh, all elements. The error that I saw was telling me that I have applied the displacement on a key point, which is uh, not a node or an element. So basically, in order to 
um, properly do this analysis, I have to apply the temperature on line instead of on elements. So I come to apply structural temperature on lines and pick the only line that I have defined in this model and give a temperature of 30. Okay. So I don't see that error anymore. Come to solve current LS. Okay, the window and the solution is done. Now let's see how my material deforms based on this heat and weight. So if you recall from the previous example, the deformation in y direction is a little bit uh, larger than without the temperature. I can also see the stress in y direction. It's again uh, greater than the temperature that we read for, or the stress that we read for weight only. I can also um, come to list results, reaction solution, and see the uh, forces. Basically, the load that we see on Fy is kind of the same, um, probably because um, the temperature did not apply that much thermal uh, stress on the material or the model. And um, the other thing I want to teach in this lesson is to see the 3D uh, image of this analysis. So if you come to plot controls, styles, size and shape, and in front of display of, display of element, Um, okay, this um, uh, option, or check this option and click OK. You see a 3D representation of the uh, analysis. And let's uh, plot results and again, nodal solution and Y. You see the same thing that we saw, but in a 3D representation. And let's see stress in Y direction. It's all the same. Stress in X direction. We have some stress in X direction. But I want to point your attention to this case. In this 3D uh, representation, the conservation of uh, volume or mass is not really represented correctly because um, according to, con to the con conservation of mass as this beam expands in y direction it should shrink in its area but this model is not showing th that thing the best way or the other way to do this analysis is to define a 3d model from the beginning so let's define a, a cube um, and a, a cube of the same uh, cross-section area and the same height and then apply the same uh, loading condition, conditions in terms of weight and temperature and we will see that in the next lesson how the expansion of the beam in y direction according to its own weight and the temperature that, uh, that is applied to it will change the cross-sectional cross -sectional area of each, and s each point at this uh, beam. But before concluding that l this lesson, let's go to list, list results again, nodal solution, and see displacement uh, for or in y direction. So again, displacements for each of the elements in y direction is shown to me. And I have 51 nodes, so I get 51 values that I can use to plot this uh, in Excel. So I can read those uh, displacements from here and list or list nodes coordinates only okay so I can um, read these values from here save the two files and merge them together and get one single Excel file and and plot uh, Y versus uh, displacement in Y direction in Excel with this I'm going to conclude uh, lesson 7